Well, I'm going to start with a triangle ABC and an angle bisector right here, CD. Angle bisector gives us this very interesting proportion. You can see I've got a lot of different size segments here, but this magenta is to the green as the red is to the blue. Amazing. Okay, let's do a couple of these. I've got an angle bisector right there, so you know the drill. We can say x is to 14 as 15 is to 21. But I'm going to give you an alternate you can do as well. What if I wrote it this way? You see, all we're doing is switching the means. We know that's legal because we did it last section. So I could say x is to 15 as 14 is to 21. Now it's up to you. Sometimes that might be nicer. But let's just solve it this way, just because we're, that's yeah, because it's easy. And um, doing it in my head, I'd probably do this. I'd probably change this, recognize the factor of three, and I'm making that into five sevenths. And then, and then I say, you know, if I just doubled that five sevenths, the numerator and denominator, then I guess it's 10 fourteenths. So, X must be, you guessed it, 10. Well, we'll start this one with the proportion already written. 6 is to Y is 4 is to 8. That's true. But you know, there's another property you may re remember of our um, proportions. We can take the reciprocal of both sides. For those of you who like the numerator to have the variable. So I could say Y is to 6 as 8 is to 4. You know, then I might look at that and say, hey, you know, 8 divided by 4, that's 2. So, if y over 6 is 2, y must be 12. We're getting good at these by now. So, red is to green, as magenta is to blue. Because this is an angle bisector. So there you go. Just like that. And you could cross multiply, but I see a pattern here. And, and this is what you're doing in your head. You're probably saying, well, okay, that's multiply by 10. Then you recognize, hey, they're both divisible by 15, so z is to 3 is 1 is to 3, and z must be 1. Well, again, with an angle bisector, so an easy calculation for p. You just had to remember one thing. That was to subtract to get the 18 for this segment right there. And then you're good to go. And again, you could write this proportion many ways. I'm going to go p to this side as the 18 to the 11. And we do our cross multiplication and p 27. Well here we go we've got 16 for this whole side and this is q my variable. The key to solving this is assigning this variable expression 16 minus q to this section. So now we could just write it down just like that. You know you could solve this and cross multiply but honestly I prefer to do this Remember, you can swap the means, or you could say q is to 16 minus q as 36 is to 28. That works well, too. Now, I'm going to choose that because I can divide out some common terms right there. So I've got a couple, I got a 4 there. So now when I cross multiply, I got smaller numbers. Okay, and let's do our distributive property. And then add 9q to both sides, divide by 16, and we're done. Well, Sam the student here has applied theorem 6-7 to say that AB is equal to AC. Hmm. And it clearly isn't just by the picture. So what's wrong here? Well, this part is okay. I do see the median. D is a midpoint because I've got the tick marks there. But... What's missing is the angle bisector. Nobody say anything about that. That's the part that's missing. Now, if it was an angle bisector, then it would be true. And that's going to be explored in uh, exercise number 25. Then you'd have an isosceles triangle. But you weren't given that. So in this particular case, we're going to say that is the problem. Well, let's find the length of University Ave here. See if we can do this. And I'm going to replace the drawing with one that looks a little more 
well, a little less map, a little more geometry. So I've got this angle bisector here, and I want this section of university that's between 12th and Washington. Well, pretty straightforward. University is to 700 as 200 is to four, oh, 400. Easy. Well, that's one half. So what's half of 700, everyone? 300 yards. I'm going to start with a isosceles triangle base there, and then I'm going to bisect the vertex angle. Okay, this is familiar ground because I know the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. If I don't remember that, I can always use this theorem, theorem with no words. And then I'm going to move on to, let's say, oops, um, I know what I was going to say, angle side angle this triangle and this triangle. They're congruent. I like that. So, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I've got those two segments congruent. That is, the base has been bisected. So now, let me see. I'm going to assign some variables. I'll just arbitrarily call this side S. If this is S, so is this. If this side is G, so is this side. So, um, let's write a ratio. I know that by theorem 6-7, proportionality, I could say G is to S as G is to S. But I can also write it this way. Proportionality theorem works as well. G is to G as S is to S. I'll choose to write it that way. And then, of course, that means, well, G divided by G s divided by s, 1 equals 1. The ratio between these two sides, the brown to the blue, 1 to 1.